Alright everyone, welcome back. There have been a few reveals, so we have a little bit more data for our predictions. So let's just jump right on in. Alright, first up, we have the Jellymon line. Uh, I really didn't think we'd be getting another set so soon, seeing as they were released not too long ago for RB1. Well, I say that, but it's one day away for that pack to release. However, still... Uh, I guess we shouldn't be too surprised we got him. So let's just take a quick look. So we got Jellymon, three calls to play, 1,000 DP, and has evade. Not too great, but you know, um, it's not bad. Inheritable trash the bottom of the opponent's Digivolution cards on attack. Same could be said for Tesla Jellymon's Inheritable. However, his main attack when attacking allows you to draw a card. It's nice, nice. I know the Jellymon deck does like to have a sizable amount of cards in order for a lot of the effects to activate. And here we have Tethysmon, effectively just getting the hand skill to, if you have Jellymon on the field, you can tuck Tesla Jellymon under Jellymon and warp straight into an ultimate. It's not bad, not bad skill. Inheritable, by placing three cards with Jellymon in this text from your trash at the bottom of your deck in any order, unsuspend this Digimon. All right, it's not bad, just adding more value to the Jellymon line. Nothing else to see here, so let's keep moving on. Next up, we have the Angoramon line. So Angoramon, three cost to play, 1,000 DP and blocker. Inheritable, all turns while your opponent has no unsuspended Digimon in play. This Digimon gains 1,000 DP. Somebody Angoramon has the same Inheritable as Angoramon. However, it also has jamming for its main skill. It's a five cost to play, 5,000 DP di Digimon. Um, and then next up we have Lamortmon, and just like T Testismon, uh, it's just hand skill. If you have Angoramon in play, you can tuck some, somebody Angoramon from your hand under one of your Angoramons, and Digivolve straight into Ultimate. Alright, and Inheritable, once per turn when this Digimon deletes an opponent's Digimon battle, trash the top card of your opponent's security stat. That's, well, we've seen Green do that before. Usually it was with the Ancient Kabuterimon, but, you know... I guess Lamortmon is going to start adding that uh, to the toolkit. All right, next again. Okay, so now we have the missing two pieces from the Agumon or Geo Gray or Shine Gray Mon line. So we do have our Geo Gray. Geo Gray, two calls Digivolution from an Agumon that has dinosaur in its traits. I do believe that's the vast majority of them, so, you know, not going to be too hard to find. It does have a very good when digivolving skill. You may search your security stack for one red or yellow tamer card and play it without paying its play cost. Nine times out of ten, if you're running this, you're trying to play Marcus. And if you do, recover one. Then shuffle your security stack. Okay. Uh, inheritable. Once per turn, when your red or yellow tamer is suspended, you may delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3,000 or less DP. Not, not too surprising. Okay. And that's a uh, five cost to play, 5,000 DP Digimon. Not that you'll be playing it if you can have anything to do with it. All right, next up is a 12 cost to play, 12,000 power Shine Greymon. D uh, Digivolve 3 from a Raj Greymon. Okay, start of main phase and also when Digivolving until the end of your opponent's turn, treat one of your Marcus Damage cards as a Digimon with 3,000 DP and blockers. Okay, not bad. Um, you know, sometimes having that, that clutch blocker can stop you from, um, you know, getting decked, not decked out, but beating out the game. So it's not bad, not bad. And all turns once per turn when one of your red or yellow tamers becomes suspended, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 6,000 DP for the turn. All right. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. So if you tandem this with the new Marcus Damon that is coming out in this set, that's a minus 9,000 DP. And that's if you use that with the Geo Greymon skill, that's yeah, that's a 12,000 DP Digimon that you can potentially delete. All right, not bad. All right, and the car we knew from Jump was going to be in this set Shine Greymon Burst Mode, hefty 15 calls to play, 15,000 DP, and when Digivolving, well. Burst Digivolution, you may play, well, you may put one Marcus Damon from in play 
back to hand to digivolve from Shine Greymon for a cost of zero. And its when digivolving skill, you may play one Marcus Damon from your hand without paying its play cost. For the turn, treat the tamer, play with this effect as a 12k DP Digimon with Rush. And your turn, once per turn, when your tamers become suspended, trash one card from the top of your opponent's security stack. Okay, okay, so this is... This is not bad. You return to Marcus in order to Digivolve for zero, and then you can play that same Marcus that you returned and give it Rush. However, the Marcus Damon that does come out in BT-13, when it comes into play, it does suspend itself, so you may have to use the Marcus Damon from BT-4 or the Marcus Damon from BT-12 in order to actually be able to attack with Rush. Either way, that's a nice effect. Um, yeah. Okay, moving on. All right, next up, we have another of the 13 Royal Knights. We have Lord Nightmon, and it appears Lord Nightmon has changed colors on us. It went from yellow to the, that we originally were introduced to it as, as purple, and it, you know, let's just, yeah, 12 cost to play, 11k DP, on play when digivolving, return one card with Lucimon in this name, or one Royal Knight. Or one card with Royal Knight in his traits from your trash to your hand. Okay, nice when you're trying to recycle. Uh, opponent's turn. When an opponent's Digimon attacks, gain one memory for each of your Digimon with Royal Knight in his traits. So, in other words, on your opponent's turn, whenever they attack, they are going to lose a minimum of one memory to attack because Lord Knightmon has to be on the field to resolve its effect. So, one memory. And with this being said... I do believe that Lord Nightmon being changed to purple, I hypothesize that Dynasmon is also going to be purple as well. And its effect is probably going to be something on play. Play a Lucimon, a car with Lucimon in this name, or a Royal Knight from your hand to the play area. And the reason why I think that is somewhat important because I think if that hypothesis is true, we are getting more Lusamon support, which may mean we are going to get either Lusamon Shadow Lord mode from Digimon Frontier or we're going to get Lusamon's X Anybody. I mean, it's still, un I'm not going to say unlikely, but improbable for the X Anybody form so early since we haven't gotten Lusamon Shadow Lord mode mentioned and Frontier, but it's a possibility as well. But, yeah, I will be quite happy if we do get another Lucimon, because I do want to build that Lucimon deck. All right, next up. All right, everyone. Apparently, while I was making this video, there was another reveal for Dynasmon that we were previously talking about, and he does do exactly, well, similar to what we were expecting him to do. Let's see. We have a 10 cost to play, 11,000 power. 3 calls to Digivolve. On play, when Digivolving, reveal the top 4 cards of your deck. Add 2 cards with Lusamon in their names or Royal Knights in their traits from among them and trash the rest. Your turn, when you play another Digimon with Lusamon in his name or Royal Knights in his trait, delete all your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon. So, it does seem to add to the likelihood of us getting Lusamon Shadow Lord mode in this pack as well. Well... He might be replacing, he might be taking the spot where I assume Belfamon was going to be, and he might be the secret rare instead. Or, you know, maybe we'll get Shadow Lord mode and Belfamon. Who knows? We haven't yet seen what the secret rares are going to be. So, yeah, I just thought I'd update this since I just found this out not too long ago. All right. All right, next we have Rosemon. Okay, not surprise, surprise that Rosemon was going to appear. Was one of the main three Digimon, Digimon partners for the main characters. So, let's take a look. 11 cost to play. 11,000 DP. And when Digivolving, by suspending one of your opponent's Digimon or Tamers, unsuspend this Digimon. And all turns, once per turn, when an opponent's Digimon or Tamer becomes suspended, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon or Tamers. 
Okay, so we can already see they kind of abandoned the digiburst that the previous Rosemonts had been adhering to, even though we did have one Rosemont that was Digisorption. But, you know, that was kind of a one-off. But either way, it seems like they're leaning more into what Bloom Lord Mon has been doing in Hydra, Hydra Mon. So, when this Digimon is, well, when you Digivolve into this Digimon by suspending one of your opponent's Digimon. So, in other words, when you Digivolve into Rosemon, you can suspend two of your opponent's Digimon or two of your opponent's Tamers or one of each. It's not bad, not bad. I am interested to see in what Lalamon, Lilamon, or Sunflowmon will do, even though we did get a Sunflowmon in BT10 that, well, it kind of functions in the same way. So, it's probably going to aim towards that line, and they're just probably taught, handing in the towel for Digiburst. Kind of sad about it, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, so we got more members of the Kentaurus Mond line. Let's start out with Repamon. Repamon, when attacking, trap the top card of your of your security stack to have one of your opponent's Digimon gain sec minus one until the end of your opponent's turn. And it has the inheritable when attacking once per turn at the total cards and both player security stacks is six or less. One of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 2,000 DP for the turn. Then we have, ooh, Cheating Mon. It has a new keyword, barrier. When this Digimon would be deleted in battle, by trashing the top card of your security stack, prevent that deletion. Okay, not bad. So you don't have to worry about being run over with this Digimon. I mean, 7,000 DP, the only thing running it over really are other ultimates and megas. But either way, uh, it also has the on deletion skill. You may play one Kudamon from your hand or trash, suspend it without paying its cost. That is really, really good. I'm gonna get into that in a second, but first, I want to cover Kentaurus Mon, 13, 13 play cost, 13,000 DP. On play, when digivolving, if the total cards in both player security stacks is six or less, gain three memory. Then, reveal one yellow card from your hand and place it on the top of your security stack. If you don't, return it to your hand. So, in other words, unless you're really playing a primarily yellow deck, your on play effect to kind of heal... Is not going to go off but you know that's fine it has the one attacking skill once per turn by trashing the top card of your security stack unsuspend this digimon and one of your opponent's digimon gets minus 7,000 dp for the turn all right what makes this line neat is the fact that it kind of i want to say it insists upon itself and what i mean by that is okay repamon so Yes, I didn't cover it in this one. So we do have another Kiaramon that is coming in BT13 that says when a card is removed from your security stack, your digi this Digimon will gain jamming. So Repamon will be able to attack, give someone sec minus two, and then jamming. So free hit on your opponent. You can Digivolve into Shirinmon, which will have barriers, so it's more than likely not going anywhere. Well, at least not run over. It could still be deleted by card effects, but, you know, that's a risk you take when you're out in the play area. And if you happen to have this entire line out, so Kudamon, Repamon, Shirinmon, and Kentorismon. So, it will happen when Kentorismon attack is going to attack for two times. It's going to have jamming. So, it's getting two free checks unless it walks into a security bomb. And then, you minus your opponent's Security by 7,000, I mean, not security, your opponent's Digimon by 7,000 DP. And if you're getting Kentorismon's effect off, you're more than likely getting Repamon. So that's minus 9,000 DP just for this Digimon. And if it so happens to exp run into a security bomb or a, your opponent blocks it and, you know, it gets deleted that way. Um, when it's deleted, it's just going to spawn a Kudamon. And Kudamon, on play, at least if you're using the promo one, will trigger Recover 1 by putting a Kentorismon back to the bottom of your deck so you can start the whole process over again. And if you have the Tamer, Richard Sampson, you can warp straight from Kudamon straight right back into Kentorismon. So it's a nice, li it's a nice little recycle thing that they have going on there. It's, uh, we're not going to see how good it is until it goes through some playtesting, but 
I'm I'm pretty excited to play it. All right. All right. So we talked about the knowns. So let's talk a little bit about the unknowns. So we do know Lord Knight, Dynas, Ganku, Jess, Cranny, Kentorismon, and Alpha all have their rarities listed. But what about the other ones? So I have Examon predicted as a super rare, Omnimon as a secret, Magnamon. Actually, you know what? No. Omnimon probably isn't a secret rare just for the fact that he is displayed on the pack. So he might be a super rare as well. And that might go same. You know what? Let's make some adjustments. All right. Now that we made the, those few tweaks. All right. So we have Examon now as a rare. Omnimon as a super rare. Magnamon. Oh. Change that again. Magnamon as a super rare. And Gallantmon as a super rare just because that they are the three Digimon displayed on the front pack. And Leopardmon is rare. UL Force is rare as well. We do know Shine. We already know the Shine Greymon line and their rarities, so it's safe to follow that the Mirage Galgamon line is going to follow suit. Um, we did get our Rosemon. It was only listed as rare, which does line up with Shine Greymon. So, but well, now we are still missing one slot for super rare. So, we might actually get still Rosemont Burst Mode, only because we're missing a super rare slot. Because we do know the rarity breakdown. So, you know what? Let me add that back in. All right. So, yeah. So, we have Rosemont Burst Mode as still another potential super rare, just because it would seem to fit with the rest of, well the main Digimon partners to the pro tags of Digimon Savers and the rarity breakdown that we currently do have predicted as of this moment. It could be something else, but you know, that's just what I predict as of this point. And we're gonna get another Thomas as rare, just as Marcus was rare, and maybe the Yoshino. All right, I wasn't expecting to get the, the Ghost Game crew added in, but they pretty much they pretty much introduced those lines in this set just to make up for the fact Gammon line had already gotten effectively the same type of effect from Digivolving from Rookie into Ultimate. They got that in RB1 Rising Win, so this was just an equalizer. That's my guess. So, for the secret rares, currently, it might be off the bat, it, it, it might be off point, but still... I have it listed as Belfamon and Lusamon Shadow Lord mode. Belfamon just because it did make a nice appearance in Dig Digimon Savers. And Lusamon Shadow Lord mode more so now that we're seeing the key the keyword Lusamon at least twice in this pack. So unless they're trying to revive a not revive, but you know, kind of slew you towards playing Lusamon a little bit more Lusamon a little bit more. It seems like we're gonna get our third Lusamon in this set, and the one that's the more likely candidate is Shadow Lord mode. So yeah. Um let's take a look at the, the breakdown. So the rarity breakdown we know we have 44 commons, 30 uncommons, 26 rares, 10 super rares, and two secret rares as of this moment for a total of 112 cards in BT13. Now with my predictions added in, we're going to have half the commons, no real touch the uncommons. It's really hard to nail down what the uncommons are going to be because there, there's a vast plethora of things that they can add support to previous things. They could throw some new things in. So I'm, I'm not going to drill down into effectively commons and uncommons too much unless we see an obvious trend to which it's easy to guess. I have the rares predicted as 14 out of 26, super rares as nine out of 10, and secret rare as two for two. So, you know what, actually, since I did update that so that we were potentially getting Rosemont Burst Mode, we will have accounted for all our super rares if they do indeed make the Royal Knights list on the pack 
super rares and the last super rare will be Rosemont burst mode and it's kind of a bit of a stretch but they may do it and I will welcome it if they do all right so is there anything that you were seeing that should be changed from these rarities so far that I've laid out um if so leave leave it in the comments below and thanks for joining in make it to the end and everyone have a good one bye bye